We are going to look at an example of adding numbers with regrouping. So once again, I'm just going to pick a number and I'm going to use these cards to help me find a number. And once again, I like using cards because it helps me to set my number out in nice, neat rows. And I'm actually going to even use my marker to draw my rows like that. And we have names for these. This is the hundreds. And this tells us how many hundreds we have. So when we see this two here, this represents the number 200. This represents the number 100. We can show those by using models. In this case, I'm going to use my base 10 blocks. And here I have 200. Each of these blocks represents 100, so I have two of them. That's 200. Here I have an additional 100. We'll put that here. This middle column represents the tens. So each of these seven represent seven groups of 10, which is the same as 70. I have right here seven 10 blocks. 70 there. And here's an additional 70. So I'll stick those I guess I'll just stick them right there. This last column represents the ones. This is probably the easiest because these ones are just individuals. So that five represents five ones. And this three represents three more ones. So let's just move this out of the way just for a moment. We're just going to put it here and we'll move this three over to here. This is our bottom number and this is our top number. We'll draw this little line here to keep them separate. Now I'm going to take away these cards and replace them with some written numbers. So one and two. We've got our sevens in the middle. And a five and a three. And let's use our addition strategies to add these numbers together. This number here is 275. 200, there's two hundreds. 70, there's seven tens, which makes 70. And five, five ones, 275. This number here is 173. We have 100, seven tens, which is 70 and three ones, which is three, 173. And I think it's important to remember that these numbers, each part of these numbers has a different meaning. And I think one of the times, one of the reasons students get confused when they're adding numbers is because they lose sight of that. And they just are thinking about the numbers and not what each of these digits represents. So let's start here with the ones digits, a five and a three. And I always tell kids, Pretty please, with big and bits on top, start with the ones place. It will make your life easier. And that's what we're going to do here. Five plus three, what does that equal? Well, we can use a whole bunch of different strategies to figure out what five plus three equals. Count on our fingers, we can count on our blocks, we can use a calculator, we can draw a picture. Maybe we just have it memorized. I'm going to use my blocks. So, five plus three more, put them all together. What does that equal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So I'm going to write that 8 down here. 5 plus 3 equals 8. Okay. Well, let's go on to the tens place. 7 plus 7. Ooh, that's a doubles fact. Most people have a pretty easy time remembering that one. But just in case, just in case we forget, here's 7 and here's 7. We can count them. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 7 plus 7 equals 14. So we can put a 14 here in the tens place, but we can't do that. That's not going to work out. Why not? Because each of these places can only contain one digit. We can't put two digits in here. 
let's talk about what does this 14 mean? Because it certainly doesn't mean 14. We said that this is really 70 plus 70. So 70 plus 70 is certainly not 14. 70 plus 70 was what? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. 70 plus 70 is the same as 140. Well, when we think about it that way, we see that this is 40 and this is 100. We can take this 100 and trade it in for one of these. It's still 140, 100 plus 40. But now we can very easily move this 100 over into the hundreds column. And instead of putting our one here, we put it up here. 70 plus 70 equals 140. 7 plus 7, we have the 4 here and the 1 here. Well, now we go to the hundreds column. We have 1 plus 2 plus 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1. And that equals 4. So we can see that. Five plus three equals eight. Seven plus seven equals fourteen. Put the four here, the one here. And one plus two plus one equals four. We're always going to put it into the very next column. And by remembering exactly what each of these digits mean, I think it can help us to be more successful there. Let's take a look at another one. Once again, we have two numbers. And once again, I want to take a little bit of time to really think about what do these numbers mean. We have six cards here, and these six digits are all the same size, and they all more or less look the same. But when we put numbers together, these digits have very different meaning based upon where they are. Once again, here's our ones place. Here's our tens place. And here's our hundreds place. So when we look at these numbers, when I look at this nine in the ones place, this is telling me I have nine ones. And when I look at this five in the ones place, it's telling me I have five ones. That represents nine and that represents five. This eight, however, because it's in the tens place, is not telling me that there's eight, it's telling me that there's 80. Now we represent 80 with this, eight of these 10 rods, but we could also represent it with 80 of these little blocks. We'd have a huge number. We use the 10 rods because they're easier to count and they're easier to visualize, but each one of these is 10 little tiny blocks all stuck together. And if we have eight of them, that makes 80. So our tens rod, our tens place is 80. And the same thing down here, we have 40. Four tens is 40. And when we get over to the hundreds, our two in the hundreds place represents 200. This is so much more than what we had in the ones place. Even though the, the actual digits are the same size, the, the number that they represent are vastly different. We have 200 and we have 100. Now, I'm going to move these out of the way for just a moment because I want to rewrite these numbers and I want to think about how we're going to add these numbers together. But I recommend using these blocks to help you as you are learning how to do this. Our first number was 289. 289. And we are adding to that 145. 145. And this is addition. I've got my blue lines here. 
to help keep my numbers organized. If you don't have a dry erase board or you're not going to draw your blue lines, I highly recommend using notebook paper. It already has the blue lines printed on there for you. You just have to turn it sideways and you're going to have those nice columns to write your equations in. We're going to add these up. Realistically, we could start anywhere we wanted, but you start in the ones place, you will make your life easier. Some teachers are going to tell you you have to start in the ones place. You don't have to, but it will be easier for you if you do. So I'm going to ask you, pretty please, start in the ones place. Nine plus five. Maybe you know that one, maybe you don't. In any case, I'm going to use blocks to count it. I've got the blocks, I'm going to use them. I've got nine and I've got five. Let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. So nine and five together, how much is that? Well, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 cannot go in the ones place because 14 is really 10 and four. See what I did right there? I took one of the fives, moved it over there into the nine. That's 10 now. We have 10 and four. I guess it would be even more appropriate to do it this way. 10 and, 10 and four. We can take this 10, take it away, and replace it with a tens rod. We still have 14. That's still nine plus five. It's still 14. I've just traded this out. There's my four. I'm going to put my four right here. But my 10 should go into the tens column. I have this 10 plus these eight plus these four. I now have three groups of tens. I have my eight, I have my four, and I have my one. I'm going to put the one right up here. You could squeeze it in wherever, but that's just a convenient spot to write it. And now I need to add these numbers up. One plus four plus eight. So I know that one plus four is five. That's easy. What's five plus eight? That's a little trickier one. You know what? Let's just count. We have the blocks. Let's use them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. And you notice I divided those into two groups. I have 10 plus three more, which is 13. Except that these are tens. So when I regroup this, it's not really 10 and three, it's 130. One plus eight plus four is 13. But this is really 10 plus 80 plus 40, which gives me 130. 30. So I can take this 100 and I can replace it with one of those, 130. Well, that makes it really easy for me to see where to write these digits. My 3 will go here for my 30, but this 100 can go over here into the hundreds column. And now I have 100 plus 200 plus 1, 1 plus 2 plus 1. I know that's four, but just remember that this four really represents 400. Both of these digits are a four, but this four represents 400, and this four only represents four. There's a huge difference. They look the same on paper, but their meaning, their value is significantly different. So I want you guys to practice this. Use a board like this. Use the base 10 blocks, use paper, whatever you feel like is going to be best for you. But don't be afraid to use these tools. The goal here is not to do this fast. The goal is here is not to be quick. The goal here is to be accurate and to understand what's happening.